uh, here uh, we will see how to find the moment of inertia of an uh, elliptical plate so uh, elliptical plate in a, a thin sheet uh, imagine mass is uniformly distributed but in the shape of an uh, ellipse with uh, a major axis as a and minor axis as b let's say uh, we are interested in finding the moment of inertia about the major axis take mass of the plate to be m uh, first you try this out um, finding moment of inertia about the major axis how you will uh, take uh, scripts how you will set up the integration how to pick the limits of integration how to convert everything to one variable form and uh, then how to evaluate the integration there are so many uh, learning uh, curves in this particular uh, question of uh, finding moment of inertia of a uh, elliptical plate so let's see how to go about uh, doing this i'll just share my screen you will see the question uh, you, maybe you can take the diagram and try it out on your own first and then uh, go through my uh, discussion right okay so you can see the situation equation of the ellipse is uh, x square by a square plus y square by b square equal to 1 where um, uh, b is uh, length of the semi minor axis a is the length of the semi major uh, axis and you have to find moment of inertia of the elliptical plate about its major axis so just try it out and now i'm going to present my uh, solution so what we'll think of doing is look at the below diagram um, here if we are interested in finding the moment of inertia about the semi sorry about the major axis about major axis we want to find out so let's say from y axis at a distance of x let us take a, a small thin rod like that dx is width of the rod and moment of inertia for that rod about uh, the axis of rotation we can write it using ml square by 12 for that rod now that rod is going to have a mass of uh, dm that dm we can write it as mass per unit area which i'm taking it as beta mass is uniformly spread in the entire ellipse so beta is the mass per unit area multiplied with the uh, area of that uh, thin uh, rod I'm assuming L to be the length of that rod. So different rods or different strips will have different length. So beta times L dx. And uh, we can write the expression for uh, uh, y, which is half the length of the rod from the equation of the ellipse. So we can write y in terms of uh, x. So if you write y in terms of x, you can get L in terms of uh, x. So this y, we can uh, write it as uh, root of b by a times root of a square minus x square so essentially y square is b square by a square times uh, uh, a square minus x square or y becomes this relation now uh, see how i am setting up the integration i am integrating it for x varying from 0 to a uh, so that we cover one half of the elliptical plate and then we multiply it by 2 for getting the entire moment of inertia about the major uh, axis. And so moment of inertia for that uh, small strip mass is dm. So it will be dm L square by 12. So we are integrating that for x varying from 0 to a and then multiplying it by 2. Now we have to convert everything to one variable form. So dm gets converted to beta L dx and L in terms of x. So L will be 2 times the y coordinate. So 2 times B by A into root of A square minus X square. So B by A root of A square minus X square, that is the uh, y coordinate. Twice of that will give uh, length of that particular rod. So now you substitute for everything. In place of uh, dm, we will put beta L dx. And we will get this expression. Now you pull out all the constant terms. So 12 will come out, 1 by 12 will come out, beta will come out. So already there is a 2 outside the integration. This becomes beta by 6. And L and L square will get multiplied. We will have L cubed uh, dx. 
and l already in terms of uh, x we are having so cube it so l cube that relation you cube it and put it here it will be 8 b cube divided by a cube times a square minus x square whole power 3 by 2 integrated from 0 to a we need to evaluate again i'm pulling out uh, that 8 b cube uh, by a cube out and the integration that is going to be left out would be to evaluate root of uh, sorry a square minus x square power 3 by 2 dx that is the integration we need to evaluate for x varying from 0 to a now to evaluate that integration we will make use of uh, a substitution that is x equal to a sin theta then you differentiate with respect to theta on both sides dx by d theta will become uh, a cos theta or dx will become a cos theta d theta. We are trying to convert this to theta form so that uh, we can evaluate the integration. Now, you in this expression, you put x equal to a sin theta and limits also accordingly will get um, adjusted when x value will be 0, theta value will be 0 and x value when it is a, then theta value will be pi by 2. So, we convert um, this integration over here to theta form so that we are going to get a cube cos cube theta for the first part and uh, dx becomes a cos theta d theta. So, this, in, this term over here gets converted to this expression in theta form. So, the only that integration becomes like a power 4 cos power 4 d theta for theta varying from 0 to pi by 2. Now, this in itself uh, you can evaluate it using something called as a Wallis uh, formula, the Wallis reduction formula. But before I give you that Wallis reduction formula and all, how to go about mathematically evaluating it. So this cos power 4 theta we need to integrate. So cos power 4 theta can be written as uh, 1 plus cos 2 theta by 2 whole square. So essentially this term here, this is cos square theta. Cos square theta is 1 plus cos 2 theta by 2. Basically we are reducing the powers when cos power 4 uh, is there we are reducing the power and uh, making it as uh, uh, lower powers right so then 1 plus cos 2 theta by 2 whole square you expand it and then this cos square 2 theta also you reduce the power degree you make it 1 so one that cos square 2 theta will become 1 plus cos 4 theta by 2 so finally you will get one expression like this for uh, that uh, cos power uh, 4 theta now, this we need to integrate it for theta varying from 0 to pi by 2. So, only this term would be uh, remaining in the integration. You evaluate, in fact, you need to evaluate all the three uh, integrations. Cos power 4 theta, when you integrate it from, for theta varying from 0 to pi by 2 will become 0. Cos 2 theta also, when you integrate it, um, will become uh, uh, 0. And hence uh, the term, so it is, this is like 3 by 8, 3 by 8 into pi by 2 would be the integration of cos power 4 theta and a power 4 is there. So we'll take this uh, value of integration and uh, uh, put it for the integration which is there over there. So if you do that and if you simplify, you are going to get uh, moment of inertia equal to, so this term is there and I'm keeping that as such. In place of beta, I'm putting mass by area of the ellipse. Now area of ellipse is uh, pi AB. Uh, remaining terms are, are there as such. You substitute and then you simplify. It becomes MB square by 4. And so that's the expression for moment of inertia of a uh, ellipse about its uh, major axis where m is mass you can see wallis formula if you had used uh, this integration of uh, 0 to pi by 2 sine power nx where n can be any integer that will be same as uh, integration of 0 to pi by 2 cos power nx now we need cos power uh, 4x dx right for uh, x varying from 0 to pi by 2 so there are two uh, separate uh, expressions for the case where n is even and for the case where n is odd so we had a case where n is even, right, where n value was 4. So you start, um, you put n equal to 4, and then you keep on reducing by uh, 2, 2, 2, 2, you reduce. So you start from 3. So if you want something, I'll just give you an example for this. The integration of, if you want cos power uh, 4x dx, the limits for x is like 0 to pi by 2. Now n value is 4, so even number. So you'll start like 
3 into 1. So that is where you will stop. Denominator, you will start from uh, 4, reduce the powers by 2. So 4 into 2, that's where you will stop. You will not go up to 0. So lowest uh, positive number, you stop. Keep on reducing by 2. And um, finally, if it is even means, you multiply it by pi by 2. So as an example, if you want integration 0 to pi by 2, if you want uh, cos power, let's say 12x uh, dx. So numerator, you start from n minus 1. So 11, keep on reducing by 2. 11, 9, 7, 5, then comes 3, then 1. Then denominator, you start from 12 itself, keep reducing by 2. 12, 10, 8, 6, 4. When you reach 2, you stop and then you multiply it with uh, pi by 2. So that will be integration of cos power uh, 12x. So if you want um, odd power, so let's say let me take sin power uh, 7x, uh, sin power 7. Uh, I want to integrate for x varying from 0 to pi by 2 means you start from n minus 1 always. So you start from uh, in the numerator 6, keep reducing by 2, 6, 4, 2. That's where you will stop. Denominator, you will start from n value. So 7 into, keep reducing by 2, 7, 5, 3, 1. That's it. Lowest positive number you reach, you will stop in both numerator and denominator. So if it is um, odd number, that into pi by 2 will not come. That's it. So sine power 7 uh, x dx integrated will be 6 into 4 into 2 by 7 into 5 into 3. So this is Wally's reduction formula. It's quite easy to establish this uh, if you know how to... Uh, reduce the powers using uh, trigonometric manipulations. Uh, you can make a note of it. Wallis formula is quite useful in mathematical integrations as well. So you see how we made use of um, uh, that particular uh, integration. If you make use of, you will straight away get that as 3 by 8 into pi by 2. Uh, that is cos power uh, 4 theta d theta integration. Straight away you can write it. Or you can go about uh, using uh, the trigonometric identities and uh, reduce the powers and then evaluate the integration. Either way you will get the thing. So, but, but just appreciate both the methods. So, uh, it is not that uh, you are only trying to solve this particular question. When it comes to advanced problem solving, you need to uh, learn different uh, methods of approach so that one particular approach might be useful in a particular question. And in a different question, there might be a completely trigonometric uh, manipulation that you might have to do in mathematics. So, where this kind of working will help you. Okay, so just learn all the different possible methods of uh, approach and eventually you also when you revise uh, just try to pay attention to which is the shortest way of arriving at the uh, answer and, and when you keep on revising this over a period of time you become good at advanced uh, level of problem solving you gain the confidence uh, over there right so that's about uh, this particular question out over uh, here